This medieval wood trick made buildings last five hundred years longer, and, well, we forgot it. The reason some medieval buildings are still standing isn't romance, mystery, or luck. It's smoke. Real smoke. Thick, slow, deliberate wood smoke that rewired timber at a level modern construction barely understands. For half a millennium, builders used a preservation method so effective it outperformed early chemicals, resisted insects, laughed at damp winters, and quietly vanished when speed replaced wisdom. Today, we're finally realizing what was lost. This isn't nostalgia. This is hard material science learned the old way. Let's get into it. Medieval builders didn't stumble into durability by accident. Walk through an old European barn or beneath a medieval church roof, and you'll notice something unsettling. The beams aren't soft. They're not spongy. They're not riddled with rot, despite centuries of moisture, smoke, insects, and neglect. These timbers weren't supposed to survive this long, at least not by modern expectations. Medieval builders noticed early on that roof beams above hearths outlasted posts sunk into the ground. Rafters, blackened by smoke, resisted decay even in damp halls, where rain, condensation, and poor ventilation were constant enemies. Over generations, this stopped being an observation and became a practice. Fresh timber wasn't rushed into construction. It was prepared, and smoke was the tool. Smoke wasn't a byproduct, but a deliberate treatment. This wasn't surface charring or cosmetic staining. Builders stacked fresh-cut oak, pine, ash or chestnut in smoke-filled spaces for weeks or months. Great halls, smoke houses, enclosed sheds with low ventilation. Fires were kept deliberately cool. No flames, no heat-driven drying. The goal was saturation. Cool smoke crept deep into the wood fibres, carrying phenols, resins and acidic compounds that permanently altered how the timber aged. The smoke didn't just coat the surface, it bonded with the structure of the wood itself. You know, nobody wrote this down because, well, nobody needed to. It was just assumed knowledge passed along without a second thought. And honestly, that assumption is exactly why it vanished over time. Wood smoke is actually loaded with antimicrobial compounds. Phenols, for instance, inhibit fungi and bacteria. Acidic compounds, on the other hand, discourage insects. And those creosote-like substances? They bind to cellulose, making the wood less digestible to pests that would normally destroy untreated lumber from the inside out. At the same time, slow smoking drives out free moisture without causing the stress fractures you get with kiln drying. The fibres, they relax instead of snapping. Shrinkage is reduced and, well, warping drops dramatically. The result is timber that stays stable. It breathes, it sheds moisture instead of trapping it, and, most importantly, it resists decay not just on the surface but deep within the grain. Medieval builders didn't know the chemistry. Honestly, they didn't need to. They judged success by survival, and smoked wood survived. Before industrial preservatives, options were, well, pretty crude. Tar, pitch, lime washes, messy, inconsistent, mostly superficial. These treatments sealed the outside while trapping moisture inside, creating perfect conditions for hidden rot. 
Smoke did the opposite. It penetrated evenly while keeping the wood breathable. Moisture could escape. Fungi couldn't take hold. Insects avoided it entirely. This is why, you know, medieval roofs often failed due to stone collapse or fire rather than timber decay. The wood actually outlived the building around it. So how did the process actually work in practice? Well, freshly cut logs were trimmed, but interestingly, rarely squared before smoking. Bark was often left on to slow moisture loss and prevent checking. The timber was stacked horizontally above a smouldering fire, fueled by hardwood peat or green branches. And flames, of course, were avoided at all costs. The enclosure, honestly, mattered a great deal. Builders trapped smoke while allowing just enough airflow to keep it moving. Over weeks, sometimes even months, the timber darkened. It hardened, and it developed a sharp, unmistakable scent that insects simply refused to cross. Only after smoking was complete did carpenters shape beams, posts, or planks. This wasn't a finishing step. It was, in fact, foundational. The Industrial Age killed patience and took the knowledge with it. Kiln drying could process timber in days instead of months. Chemical preservatives promised instant protection without soot or labour. Open hearths disappeared. Smoke-filled interiors became unacceptable. Speed won. Uniformity won. Durability lost. Many 20th century structures now fail in decades while medieval beams still carry roofs after 500 years. Cleaner buildings didn't mean stronger buildings. They meant weaker materials hidden behind modern expectations. World War II accelerated this mindset. Mass production mattered more than longevity. Replaceable structures became normal. Timber became disposable. This medieval trick still works for modern survival and building. If you're building off-grid, constructing a timber frame shed, or setting fence posts meant to last, smoke preservation isn't theory. It's practical. So, small logs or boards can actually be smoked in a simple shed, a pit fire set up, or even a metal drum with, you know, restricted airflow. Hardwood or greenwood, well, that produces heavy smoke without much flame. It's important to rotate the timber every few days. Remember, keep the fire cool. And really, just let time do the work. After several weeks, the difference is, uh, obvious, the wood is lighter, and at the same time, darker. It's more resistant to moisture. It even smells different, because, well, it is different. So, where does smoke timber truly shine today? Well, fence posts buried in soil last dramatically longer when they've been smoked. Fungi and insects, they really struggle to colonise them. Roof rafters can resist condensation rot in cabins that don't have vapour barriers. Tool handles, for instance, gain durability without the need for synthetic chemicals. Outdoor furniture, too, holds up without those peeling finishes. Even small-scale repairs can benefit. Smoking replacement beams over a fire pit can, honestly, extend their lifespan by decades. This isn't about recreating the medieval world. It's about, well, stealing what worked. What this forgotten method teaches about material respect is, well, quite profound. Smoke preservation demanded time, observation 
and restraint. Medieval builders understood that durability wasn't rushed. Materials were prepared, not forced. Smoke wasn't waste. It was a tool. Timber wasn't treated as disposable. It was respected. That mindset, honestly, matters now more than ever. Why reclaiming this knowledge actually matters today? As builders and survivalists push back against chemical dependency, smoke-treated timber offers a proven alternative. It's sustainable, repairable, effective. It doesn't rely on industrial supply chains or toxic coatings. More importantly, it reconnects us to a lineage of builders who solved long-term problems with short-term inconvenience and long-term thinking. That's real wisdom. If this kind of deep, practical history matters to you, do consider subscribing to History HQ. Share this with fellow builders, survivalists, and serious history buffs. Help keep knowledge that actually works alive where it belongs.